For this project, I'm going to show you how to make this cute potholder dress. And I just want to thank Anne for the wonderful idea. So I'm going to show you either two different styles. This style or this style that has a little bit more of a flare to it. And also I'm just showing you different color schemes. And I'm just going to show you, I'm going to lay this on top so you can see the difference between this dress and the other dress which flares a little bit more. And how I came up with the difference between the two is by using two different crochet hooks and I used a G hook and this is a four millimeter crochet hook and this one is a J hook or a six millimeter crochet hook. So I'll show you how you know you can make whichever style that you like best and I'll show you how to do both of them. So for this project I'm going to be showing you how to make more of a Christmas colored one and I'm using sugar and cream. This is 100% cotton and I'm just using sugar and cream because I got the best deal on this but you can use any 100% cotton yarn that you like and this is by Lily and this color is mistletoe and this is just a little bit more information on the yarn that I used and this one's only 56.7 grams or two ounces and I'm also using sugar and cream the white color too now if you want the cute little pearl in the center of the ribbon I just used um, I just bought a bag of pearls that I just keep and the little pearl has a little hole that you can um, put your tapestry needle through. so for this project I'm actually using two tapestry needles but I actually could use the smaller one to complete the whole project and the reason why you're going to want a smaller one is if you don't want to use a regular sewing needle and thread you can use your tapestry needle and you want to make sure it's small enough that it would fit through the hole and you can see how this one will fit through nicely whereas this one is way too big so you want to make sure that you get a tapestry needle if you do want to use the tapestry needle for that that um, has a big enough eye on it that you could fit the yarn through but still be able to fit through your beads so you can see that this tapestry needle you can fit your yarn through but the reason that I'm not using this tapestry needle for the whole project is because the eye is bigger on this one and it's quicker and easier to thread it's a little bit more difficult with the smaller one but the smaller one I can still fit the ribbon through so it'll fit this ribbon through easily and then I could sew the pearl on which is why I like it so this is the ribbon that I used the Ofre ribbon blue like a light blue color for this project and the width of the ribbon was one eighth of an inch okay and you're also going to need this wooden ring which is what we're going to crochet around for the top and these are from boy cabone rings they're two inch fifty millimeter and they come in a pack of five and I've already used two of them and I paid less than three dollars for all five of them and of course you'll need a pair of scissors okay so the first thing we're going to do is make this beautiful ring at the top of our dress and here's the back of it so you're just going to take your wooden ring and just kind of set it aside for now and go ahead and get your whatever color yarn that you're going to start with I'm going to start with the white yarn and the first thing I'm going to do is do my slip knot so just take your yarn and you're just going to fold it loop it over on itself and then take your crochet hook we're going to start with the J hook or six millimeter crochet hook just put it through the loop and then you're going to hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb and then you're going to yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot and then you're going to chain 30. 
So I'm going to do four of them with you. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead and chain 30, and then come back, and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, here you have a chain of 30. So now we're going to go ahead and chain two. And that's going to count as your first half double crochet. So kind of hold your last stitch that you made. And we're going to go ahead and chain two. One, two. And then you're going to take your wooden ring and you're going to place it right on top of that chain two that you just created and then you're going to take and pull the chain through the wooden loop and now we're going to work half double crochets around the ring okay so now you're going to go with your hook you're going to go into the ring in between your chain and the wooden ring with your crochet hook. You're going to bring up a loop. And then you're going to go into the third chain from the hook, which should be the first visible chain in the wooden ring. So you're going to go into if I can position myself on camera, go into that stitch and then you're going to bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook. You're going to yarn over and go through all three for your first half double crochet. So here you can see on the back what it looks like so far and then on the front. So I'm going to do a few with you. So you're going to go into, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go into the wooden ring in between your chain and the wooden ring. And then you're going to bring up a loop. You can kind of see how my fingers are laying. Bring up a loop. And then you're going to go into the next stitch over. So you're going to take your crochet hook and go into that next stitch over. Then you're going to go outside the ring. You're going to bring up a loop. So yarn over and bring up a loop. And now I have three loops on my hook. And then I'm going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three for a half double crochet. And what's nice is you can kind of move them over as you're working. So I'm going to do a couple more with you. And then, like I said, you can move them over. So this one I'm going to talk you through it again and then I'll let you finish doing your half double crochets all the way around the ring. So I'm going to take my crochet hook, I'm going to go in the wooden circle, in between the chain and the wooden circle, I'm going to bring up a loop. Now I have two loops on my hook. Now I'm going to go into the next stitch on the chain. Go outside the wooden ring, yarn over and bring up another loop. And then I have three loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three for a half double crochet. And that is how it's going to look all the way around the ring. And then on the back, you can see it's starting to cover on the back of the ring as well. So go ahead, finish. You're going to finish doing half double crochets all the way to the end of your chain as you're working around this wooden ring and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so this is how your project should be looking.
And I finished doing half double crochets all the way to the end. So now what you're going to do is you're going to do a slip stitch to that beginning half double crochet that you did. So you're going to take your crochet hook, go into that first stitch under both loops. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then you're going to take the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And then we're going to finish off. You're going to yarn over, you're going to bring the yarn through, and you're going to bring enough yarn that you can sew with your tapestry needle onto your dress. And then you need to take the loose yarn in on the other side and put your tapestry needle, use your tapestry needle, and I'm going to show you we have to sew it to the bottom of that stitch. And I'm just using my larger tapestry needle only because it has a larger eye and it's easier to get my thread through the eye of the tapestry needle. So then I'm just going to take my tapestry needle and then you want to find that beginning stitch and then just go into the bottom of that stitch and then I want to go towards the back because this is going to be the front so here you can tell, find your front, and then which side is the back. So this is what the back looks like, and then this is the front. So you don't want to tie your knots and make the front look messy, so just bring it to the back. And then on the back, you could tie a knot with your yarn that you used, that you made long enough for sewing. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take and tie a knot on the back. And I just like to tie it three times just to make sure it won't come loose. And you could either go ahead and bury your loose end now or just wait. I'm just going to wait. So now you're done with the loop part of it. You're just going to put this aside for now while we work on the main dress. Okay, so now we've finished the ring. And now we're going to make the collar of the dress. And I'm using the same color scheme as this dress except where I would use the pretty blue. I'm going to be using the um, Christmas colors. So we're going to start doing the collar now. So I have my white yarn and I'm still using my J hook or six millimeter crochet hook. And the first thing we're going to do is just a slip knot. So you're just going to take your yarn and just fold it over on itself to form a loop. And then take your J hook and put it through the loop. And then you're going to hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. And then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for a slip knot. And now we're going to do a chain of 15. So I'll do four of them with you just to remind you how to do it. But you're actually going to do 15 of them. Just going to yarn over, turn your hook upside down, and go through that loop for one, two, three. Four. So go ahead and do 15, a chain of 15, and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I have my chain of 15. So now what you're going to do is you're going to do a slip stitch to form a ring. So you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to go into that first stitch, and you can kind of hold your loop like this. And then you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull the yarn through both of those loops for a slip stitch. And then you have a little nice ring that you're going to be working into. So now we're going to do 40 du double crochet into this ring. For the first double crochet, you're going to chain three. One, two, three. So that counts as your first double crochet. So now we're going to do 40 double crochet into the ring and I'm just going to do a couple with you. You're going to yarn over and then you're going to go and you can kind of see how I'm holding my fingers. Go into that ring. You're going to bring up a loop. You see how my thumb goes up to stabilize. And then you're going to, you have three loops on your hook. 
You're going to yarn over and go through two. And then you're going to yarn over and go through two. So you have two double crochet done. And you can see how my fingers are to help you as you work your double crochets around the ring. So you're going to yarn over, go into the ring, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. So I have three done. I'm going to do one more with you. Yarn over, go into the loop, bring up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over and go through two, and yarn over and go through two. So you're going to need 40 double crochet. So far I did four. Go ahead and complete 40 double crochet into the circle and you should be able to move the double crochet freely around the circle. Okay, so come back after you've done 40 and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so you should have completed 40 double crochet into the ring. So before we arrange the collar nicely, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the slip stitch. So you're just going to take your crochet hook you're going to go into that top stitch of that first double crochet that we did. And you're going to yarn over and you're going to bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. And then go ahead and chain three. One, two, three. And that's going to be your first double crochet. So go ahead and make a big loop so you don't lose your work. And then you can go ahead and move your double crochet around until you have the collar arranged how you like it. Okay, so I evened out my double crochets the way I like it. And where you made your first double crochet, that's going to be the back of the dress. So you can kind of fold it and you can kind of see how your dress is going to look like in the front. And make sure you have it arranged nicely how you like it. And now what we're going to do, once you have it the way you like, you're just going to take and you're going to finish doing a double crochet all the way around. You're going to do one double crochet into every stitch around. So you're going to yarn over, you're going to go into the next stitch, you're going to bring up a loop, three loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and go through two and yarn over and go through two. So I'm going to yarn over, I'm going to go into the next stitch and when I go into that stitch I'm going under both loops with my crochet hook, I'm bringing up a loop, three loops on my hook, yarn over and go through two and yarn over and go through two. So you can see my double crochets how they look. So one double crochet into every stitch all the way around. And do one more with you. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. So go ahead, finish one double crochet into every stitch all the way around, and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so this is how your work should look. And I finished doing one double crochet into every stitch. Now I'm going to do a slip stitch. So I'm going to take my crochet hook and go into the top stitch of that first double crochet and then I'm going to yarn over and bring that yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. So now this is where we're going to change crochet hooks. And this is how you're going to do both dresses the same way. I'll tell you when the difference changes for the dress portion of it, the lower part of the dress. So now you're going to do a chain three with your G hook or four millimeter crochet hook. It's a little bit smaller. So you're going to yarn over, go through that loop for one, two, three. And that's going to count as your first double crochet. So we're going to do two double crochet into the same stitch. So you're going to yarn over, Go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, Oop, let me do that again, bring up a loop, you have three loops on your hook, yarn over and go through two, 
and then yarn over and go through two. So I did two double crochet into the same stitch. Now I'm going to chain one. And I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to skip one stitch and work a double crochet into the next stitch. So I'm going to bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. And then I'm going to do another double crochet into the same stitch. Yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. And that's how your work is going to look all the way around. So I'm going to do one more with you. So I'm going to chain one, yarn over, skip the next stitch, work a double crochet into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. And then I'm going to do another double crochet into the same stitch, yarn over, Go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. So go ahead and finish that pattern all the way around and then back to the beginning and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so this is how my work is looking so far. And now I'm going to go ahead and do a um, slip stitch. I already did my chain one as my last stitch. So now I'm going to do my slip stitch. So I'm going to go into that top stitch of the first double double crochet and then I'm going to yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on my hook for a slip stitch. And now we're going to change colors. So I'm going to take my beautiful Christmas color one and then I'm going to take and I'm going to hook the new color and bring it through the loop. And make sure you leave enough yarn to bury into your work. Now go ahead and chain one. Yarn over and go through for chain one. And then you're going to turn your work. And you're going to go ahead and cut the white yarn because we're done with that one or your old color that you're using. And you're going to go ahead and tie a knot. So now I'm going to go ahead and make sure my work is turned to the right side. And you can tell this by on my work. Let me just show you. Well, first let me go ahead and chain three. That's going to be your first double crochet. One, two, three, and then just leave a long loop for now. And on mine, you can see that loose yarn in that we tied the knot on the right side. So here you can see that I have the right side. So I'm going to have the right side showing as I work and put the wrong side on the inside of the dress. So I'm going to take and go back. Once I have the right side, put your crochet hook back into your loop. And you can always bury the loose yarn ends when you're done, so you just ignore those for now. Or you can kind of place them into the inside towards the wrong side. And now you're going to do, we're going to do three double crochet into each of these loops, big loops in between. They're actually the chain one spaces in between the two sets of two double crochet. So, or one set of two double crochet. So I'm going to show you here I'm going to go in between the first two sets of two double crochet and work into the center. And I'm going to do two more because I already did my first double crochet. 
So I'm going to yarn over, go into that space, chain one space, bring up a loop, three loops on my hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. So that counts as two double crochet. I'm going to do one more, yarn over, go into that same space, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. So now I'm going to go ahead and chain two, one, two, and then I'm going to do th three double crochet into that next chain one space. So I'm going to yarn over, go into that next chain one space, I'm going to bring up a loop, three loops on my hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. So then I'm going to do two more, double crochet into that chain one space, I'm going to yarn over, go into the same space, bring up a loop, three loops on my hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. And then I'm going to do one more, yarn over, go into that same space, bring up a loop, three loops on my hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. So then I'm going to chain two, I'm going to do one more with you, chain one, chain two, and then I'm going to do three more double crochet into the next chain one space. I'm going to yarn over, go into that next chain one space, and do a double crochet, one, I'm going to do two more in the same chain one space, two, and three. So go ahead and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so you should be back to the beginning. So now we're going to do a slip stitch into that first stitch on that first double crochet. So I'm going to go ahead and yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch. And now we're going to change back change colors back to the white or whatever previous color that you were using and then you're just going to take and loop the yarn through hook it through the loop make sure you leave enough yarn for tying your knot and then you're going to go ahead and do a chain one and then turn your work and just tie a knot and you can go ahead and cut your previous yarn because we're done with that for now <clears throat> and then just tie a knot make sure it's nice and secure I usually tie it three times Just make sure I pull. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and chain three. One, two, three. And that's going to count as your first double crochet. Now, here we are going to be working in between are sets of three double crochet. So for the first one, the first double crochet that I just did, I'm going to work into this space right here because this space is in between. This is a set of three double crochet and this is a set of three double crochet. So I want to work right in between that set. So I have one done already and for this one I'm going to be doing a shell. So I have one double crochet, I'm going to yarn over, go into that space between my two sets of three double crochet, I'm going to bring up a loop, 
I have three loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and go through two. And then I'm going to yarn over and go through two. So I have a set of two double crochet. So now I'm going to go ahead and chain one. And now I'm going to do another set of two double crochet into the same space. So I'm going to yarn over, go in the same space, bring up a loop, three loops on my hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. And then I'm going to do one more in that same space, yarn over, go in that same space, bring up a loop, three loops on my hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. So I have my first shell completed in that first chain two space. So now I'm going to do another shell in this next chain two space, which is in between my sets of three double crochet. So I'm going to go ahead and yarn over, go into that first chain two space, bring up a loop, three loops on my hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. And then I'm going to do another double crochet in that same spot, yarn over, go in the same space, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. Then I'm going to chain one. And now I'm going to do two more double crochet into the same space. Yarn over, go in the same chain two space, bring up a loop, three loops on my hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. Yarn over, go in the same space, bring up a loop, three loops on my hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. So you can see that I have two shells done, one here, in one here. So now I'm going to do another shell into the next space, chain two space. So this is how my work looks. You can see how I have a shell in each chain two space between, and in between each shell is a set of three double crochet. So that's how your work should look. Go ahead and finish this pattern all the way around back to the beginning and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so you should be back to the beginning and this is how your work should be looking. Now we're going to do a slip stitch into that first double crochet we did. Just go into that top stitch and then you're going to yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. Okay, now we're going to change colors. So just bring in your color that you're using for the main color of the dress. And you're just going to take and loop it actually yarn it or just kind of hook it I mean and then just bring it through the loop and then you're just gonna make sure you leave enough to tie your knot and you're gonna go ahead and chain one yarn over turn the hook upside down just go through that loop for a chain one and then turn your work over and you can go ahead and cut the um, previous yarn color that you were using I'm using white I'm gonna go ahead and cut that and then you just tie your knot okay so now this is where you're going to decide what kind of flare that you want for the dress do you want a wider flare like this one or do you want the skinnier flare like this one so I'm going to be doing the skinnier flare but if you like the way this dress flares out then you're going to switch now and start using your J hook or your six millimeter crochet hook but I am going to stay with this 
size of a flare. So I'm going to continue with the hook that I'm using. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and chain three. One, two, three. And that's going to count as your first double crochet. But before we continue with our new color, we want to make sure that we find the front of our dress. So usually what I'll do is I'll put our loose yarn end in the ring towards the back and just make sure that it's in the center of the ring. And we're going to go ahead and sew on our ring. Now when you sew your ring on, you should have the long yarn end that you left for sewing. If you didn't, just take your tapestry needle and some white yarn or whatever color your ring is, the same color, to sew on to your project. And what you're going to do is you want to make sure you have your right side facing the front of the dress. So the right side looks like this and then the wrong side looks like this. So make sure you have the right side facing forward and then you're going to take your tapestry needle and put it on the sewing end of your yarn. Okay, so I have my tapestry needle on and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tapestry needle and I'm going to go into the dress right at the base of the collar. So right along here is where I'm going to be sewing. And you want to make sure that you have the right side facing forward and you have the ring centered where you want it. And then you're just going to take let me take my then you're just going to take and start sewing. Make sure you go on the back side at the base, <clears throat> excuse me, at the base of the collar as well. And then you could see how it blends in. Okay, and then from the back side, you want to make sure that you go up into the ring and out the front of the ring and then just make sure that you're lining up your ring the way you like it and then just keep going at the base and then just sew it onto the dress and then come back. Okay so I have my loops on to the top of the dress and you can see the back and I buried all the loose yarn ends and I just what's nice about this pattern that I'm um, making is that you can just put the loose ends in the center and you don't have to worry I mean if you want to make it more neat you can bury them in here but um, and all you do is you just take your tapestry needle and you kind of weave the loose yarn ends into the inside but no one's going to see the inside so I just leave them kind of long so they don't poke through to the front and you can see how it's buried no one can tell that you have loose yarn ends in the center. And the reason why you're putting the ring on now is because we have to do the armholes. So you want to make sure you know where you are while you're doing your crochet so you can make the armholes. And for the armholes, we're going to use six total shells. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do a double crochet one double crochet in between each shell and then in the chain one space in the middle of the shells we're going to be doing another shell. So this first chain three that we did is going to count as the first double crochet between these two shells. So now I'm going to go into this first chain one space and do a double crochet. So you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to yarn over, go into that first chain one space, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. Now we're going to do another double crochet into the same chain one space. <clears throat> And then you're going to chain one, 
and then you're going to do two more double crochet into the same chain one space to finish your shell. So now we're going to go into the space between the two shells and we're going to do one double crochet. So you're going to yarn over, you're going to go into that space, you're going to bring up a loop, you have three loops on your hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. Now we're going to work in the next chain one space. So if you remember we did two double crochets, a chain one, and then two double crochets to complete a shell. So we're going to work in that chain one space. So you're going to yarn over, you're going to go into that chain one space, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two for your first double crochet. Do another double crochet. I'm going to chain one, two more double crochet in the same chain one space. <clears throat> and then we're going to check where we are. And you can see that I've got three shells on this side. So that's going to be the front part of the armhole. And then on the other side, you want three shells to make the back side of the armhole. So what you're going to do is in the front part of the dress only, you're going to do a double crochet into the space between the two shells. So you're going to yarn over, go into that space, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. So then you're going to count six shells. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so you want to work into this space between the two shells on the back side. So you're going to take and yarn over, go into that space, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, Yarn over and go through two, and yarn over and go through two. And you just created your first armhole. So now we're going to do a shell into the first chain one space. So yarn over, go into that space, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. I'm going to do another double crochet. And then we're going to chain one and then do two more double crochet. And so we're going to repeat that all the way over to this side and then we're going to create the other armhole the same way. So I'm going to go ahead and work this with you to show you how to do it. Okay, so I finished that shell. Now in the space between the shells, I'm going to do a chain one, I mean a double crochet. And then I'm going to do another shell into the chain one space.
Okay, and then you just have to make sure we're going to have four shells in the front and in the back. So, so far I have one, two, three. So I'm going to do one more here. Okay, so now we're going to do the other armhole. So I have four shells, one, two, three, four. And you can see how I have, for the other side, I have three more shells. That's going to be part of the armhole. So I'm going to do a double crochet in the space between the two shells. And then you're going to count six shells around for the other armhole. So here you can see I have three and three. So I'm going to do a double crochet into this space here between the shells to make the armhole. So I'm going to yarn over, go into that space, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. So I just created the other armhole. So now I'm going to do the shell in the first chain one space. And then I'm going to do a double crochet between the shells. And then we're going to do our last shell into the chain one space. And then you're going to do a slip stitch into that first double crochet that we created. So you're going to yarn over and bring it through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. And then you're going to chain three, one, two, three. And that's going to be your first double crochet for our next row. Okay, so let me show you how the dress looks now. So you can see how you have your first round and you have one, two, three, four shells on the front. And then you also have one, two, three, four shells on the back. And then you have an armhole. So this has three shells in the back as well as three shells on the front. And now we're going to start the dress of the pot holder. Okay, so now we did our first double crochet and on the previous row this was the single double crochet that was done between the two shells. So now for this row you need to do two double crochet in the same stitch. So you yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, you have three loops on your hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. So on this row you have two double crochets and to each previous rows single double crochet. So let me show you this pattern on the dress. So here you can see the pattern where you had one double crochet between the two shells and then on the next row you have two and then the next row you have three, four, five, six, seven and then you have the eight. So that's the pattern that we're doing and then 
and between each of these you have the shells. Okay, so we just did our first where we have the one double crochet and now we have the two double crochet. So now in the first chain one space of the next shell, we're going to do a shell. So you're going to yarn over, go into that chain one space, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. I'm going to do another double crochet. I'm going to chain one, two more double crochet for a shell. So we have the two double crochet, we have the shell in the chain one space. Now in the previous row, that single double crochet, we're going to do two double crochet into that stitch. So you're going to yarn over, go into that stitch right above that double crochet that you created in the previous row. You're going to bring up a loop. You have three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and go through two, and yarn over and go through two. And then you're going to do one more double crochet in that same stitch. And then you're going to go into that first chain one space and you're going to do another shell. And now you're at the armhole. So in the armhole, you have a little V shape with the double crochet here. So we're going to go into the center of that and do our two double crochet. So you're going to yarn over, go into the center, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. Yarn over, go into the same loop for a second double crochet. So you have two double crochet in that armhole. And then you're going to go to the first chain one space in the next shell and do another shell. Okay, so you can see how the pattern is looking. So you're doing two double crochet into the previous row, single double crochet, and then a shell into each chain one space, and you saw how I did the armhole. So you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around, back to the beginning, and then come back and I'll show you how to move on to the next row. Okay, so you should be back to the beginning. So we're going to do a slip stitch into that first double crochet that we made. Just going to bring up a loop and bring it through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And now what you're going to do is in the previous row you have the two double crochet. We're going to go into the center of those two double crochet. So take your hook, just go into the center between those two double crochet, you're going to bring up a loop, you have two loops on the hook, you're going to yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. And then you're going to go ahead and chain three. So you're going to yarn over and go through for one chain, two, three. And that's going to count as your first double crochet. And now we're going to do two more double crochet into that same space. So you're going to yarn over, go into the same space, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. So now we're going to do one more double crochet into that space for a total of three. So you can see how we have the one double crochet, two, and three double crochet. 
So now, I'm going to go into the next chain one space, yarn over and go into that chain one space in that next shell, bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. And we're just going to create another shell, chain one, two more double crochet. So now I have my three set of three double crochet and then my next shell. So now in the next two double crochet spot right in between, the space right in between, we're going to do three double crochet. So you're going to yarn over, go into that space, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two for double crochet. You can do two more double crochet in that same spot for a total of three. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so you should be back to the beginning. So we're going to go ahead and do a slip stitch into that first stitch of the first double crochet. You're just going to bring up yarn over and just bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. So now you're going to go into that here you have three double crochet on the previous row one two three. We're going to go in between the first and the second double crochet in that space. So just take your hook go into that space bring up a loop you have two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. So now you're going to go ahead and chain three. One, two, three. Now we did one double crochet on this row, two double crochet on this row, three double crochet on this row. So now on this row you need four. So you're going to do two double crochet in the space between the first and the second double crochet. And then in the space between the second and the third double crochet, you're going to do two more. So we already did one double crochet. So now we're going to go do another double crochet in the same space. So you yarn over, go in the same space, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two yarn over and go through two. Yep, I kind of split the yarn there so let me redo that one. Okay, so now we're going to do two double crochet in the space between the second and the third and then we'll have four total double crochet for this row. So that's what you're going to do for every three double crochet on the previous row. You're going to do four double crochet on this row with two in the first space and two in the second space for a total of four double crochet. And then in the next chain one space for the next shell, you're going to do another shell. And you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the beginning and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so now you should be back to the beginning and we're going to do a slip stitch into that first double crochet that we did. Just yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. 
And now you can see how we have the one double crochet on that row, two double crochet on this row, three double crochet on this row, and then four on this row. So now the next row is going to have five. So how you're going to do that is we're going to go in between the first and the second double crochet and do two double crochet in this space. In the center of the four double crochet, that center space, you're just going to do one double crochet. And then in between the third and the fourth double crochet in that space, you're going to do two more double crochet for a total of five. So I'm going to do that with you. So you're going to go into that first space in the previous row between the first and the second double crochet. You're going to bring up a loop. You have two loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and go through both loops for a single crochet. And then you're going to go ahead and chain three. One, two, three. That's your first double crochet. So then you're going to yarn over, go into that same space, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. So now we have two double crochet in that first space. So now in the center space, we're going to do one double crochet. And now in the last space between the third and the fourth double crochet, we're going to do two more double crochet in the same space and then we would have five double crochet total. So now you're going to do a shell in your next chain one space and then repeat the five double crochet in the next space just like you did for this one. You're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning and then I'll show you how to do the slip stitch and move on to the next row. Okay, so this is how your work should be looking. You can see how you have a nice dress pattern forming. So now we're just going to go ahead and move on to the next row because we're not going to change colors until after the row with the six double crochet. So we just finished five. So now we're going to do a slip stitch to the first stitch of that first double crochet that we did. Let's see, I'm going to go into the top. There we go. Okay. So go ahead and yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. So now on the previous row, you have the five double crochet. So we're going to be going in between the first two double crochet space and we're going to do two double crochet into that space and then we're going to do one double crochet between the second and third one double crochet between the third and fourth and then two double crochet into the fourth and fifth between that fourth and fifth space. I'm going to do that with you. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go into the first space between the first and second double crochet and you're going to bring up a loop. You have two loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. And then go ahead and chain three. One, two, three. That's going to count as your first double crochet. So then we're going to do another double crochet into that same space. So you have two double crochet in that first space, then you're going to yarn over, go into this second space between the second and third, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. So now we're going to do one more double crochet between the third and fourth space. So yarn over, go into that space, bring up a loop, yarn over and go through two, and yarn over and go through two. So now I have a total of four, and then we're going to do two double crochet in that last space. One, and 
and 2. So I had a total of 6 double crochet for that row. And you can see how it's forming a nice triangle. And that's what you want. So now I'll go ahead and do a shell in your next chain 1 space. And then just repeat this pattern all the way around back to the beginning. And then I'll show you how to change colors. Okay, so you should be back at where you started. So we're going to do a slip stitch into that top stitch of the first double crochet. Just bring up the yarn and then bring it through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And now we're going to change colors. So I'm going to bring back my white yarn that I was using. And I'm just going to loop the yarn and bring it through the loop on the hook. And then I'm going to leave an extra amount of yarn to tie a knot. And then I'm going to chain one. So yarn over and go through the loop for chain one. And then turn the work over. And I'm going to cut my previous color that I was using. And I'm just going to tie a knot. And now we're going to do seven double crochet. So you're going to go into that first space. And you're going to bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over, and then go through both for a single crochet. And then you're going to go ahead and chain three. One, two, three for your first double crochet. And then in that same spot, you're going to do another double crochet. And then you're going to go into the next space and do a double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, go into the space between the second and the third double crochet on the previous row, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. So then I'm going to go into the next, next space and do a double crochet. And that will be four double crochet. And then yarn over, go into the next space for my fifth double crochet. And then in that last space, I'm going to do two double crochet in the same space for a total of seven. Okay, and then in your next chain one space, you're going to do a shell and you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around and then come back. And then I'll show you how to change colors again. Okay, so I already did the slip stitch for that row. So now I'm going to take my other color and I'm just going to go ahead and join and do my chain one. This is going to be our last round. And then just take and tie the knot. But I'm going to go ahead and um, cut my previous yarn and tie my knot. And now there's going to be eight double crochet for our last round. So you're going to go into that first space, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, going to yarn over and go through both for your first single crochet. And then you're just going to chain three for your first double crochet. One, two, three. And then you're going to put another double crochet in the same space. So that'll be two double crochet. Next space over, just one double crochet. Next space over, one. 
next space over one next space over one and then the next and last space over you're going to do two double crochet in the same space one and two so now you have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you're going to repeat that pattern. Do a shell in your next chain one space and then eight double crochet all the way around. And then we'll finish up our dress. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do our slip stitch. So just go to that top of that first double crochet that we did. And then yarn over and bring your yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And then you're going to finish off. You're going to yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. So now you're just going to get your tapestry needle because you're going to want to bury this loose yarn end. So you just take your loose yarn end on your tapestry needle and you're just going to weave it through. And I'm just going to take mine and just go right across here with my, and you just kind of weave it through your work. And then once you've weaved, weaved it through, you can cut it. Now for these other loose yarn ends, what I do just to make it more secure is I just kind of tie a loose knot on the inside. You don't want to pull it tight and make the dress go up. So you just want it kind of a nice little knot on the inside here. And then once you tie your knot, you can just take and cut it. You just want to make sure that these loose yarn ends don't fall down towards the end of the dress. And you have the basic part of the dress done and this is how much yarn that I had left over and I'm just going to show you this was the same amount of yarn that I used for these two dresses and you can see for the bulk of the light blue that I used I, I was able to complete one full dress even with the bigger flare on the dress and then I made a smaller flare on this dress and then I used up the rest of my light blue doing the second dress however at the bottom of the dress I just did a single crochet when I changed color and I did a single crochet in every stitch around the dress but I still ended up with one two three four five six seven eight for my last row and then one two three four five six seven so I had seven for this previous row before I changed colors and did a single crochet with um, the color change and then eight for the last. So if you wanted to do something like that, that's how I did that variation. Okay, so now to finish off the dress, I want to put a ribbon right through the um, loop here at the top. Just make sure you have the front part of your dress facing you and then I'm just using this celebrated 360 ribbon and it is a shimmery white colored ribbon and it is three-eighths of an inch and then just take your tapestry needle if that's what you're using you can use a sewing needle and thread if you wanted but just make sure that your tapestry needle is the size that'll fit through the pearl if you're going to be putting a pearl in the center of your ribbon. Now with the tapestry needle you can take and put your ribbon through the um, tapestry needle which is what I like and if you're using a sewing needle then you're just going to have to take your ribbon and you're just going to put it into the base you can use your crochet hook too to get the ribbon in here if that um, to get the 
Ruben threw that um, first loop there. And you can see how I was able to get, you just need to get your ribbon into this first space. Let me see if I can bring the lighting a little bit better. Okay, so here you can see, you would just take and hook your ribbon through the loop at the base of your um, ring. Okay, so with the tapestry needle, I'm going to take my pearl and just bring it through, bring the ribbon through and the needle through. But if you're going to use a sewing needle, then you would just sew the pearl in place. And this ribbon might be a little bit tougher to get through. So I'm going to grab something to help me grip the tapestry needle. So here I just have one of these little can opener grips or jar opener grip. Or you can probably get a towel or um, something else to help grip it. And then you can just pull the pearl right onto the ribbon. If you're not able to get it, then you can just kind of sew the pearl in place. Okay, and then here is the bow. Wait, it shimmers and has a nice pearl in the center. So I did have to maneuver a little bit more with this bigger ribbon to place it right underneath the pearl, but I was able to do it. And I, I do like this shimmery ribbon with the pearl, so I'm happy with this one turned out, even though it did take a little bit more maneuvering with it and this ribbon was much easier it was a smaller ribbon that I used with the blue one and this is the ribbon that I used for the blue one it was only one-eighth of an inch so it's a little bit smaller okay so you are all done and here are the different dresses